Thank you. Sorry, I'm just going to put my glasses back on, but I'm going to perch them on the end of my nose so I can see everybody in the audience and still read my notes. And, um, and as I start, I feel like I should throw my notes away. Uh, actually, I say no to xenophobia. And I say that the reason that trade associations exist is because people can achieve more by working together than any one organisation can achieve by working alone. And so my challenge, my invitation, my outreach is to say to all of the companies that are not yet members of SACIA or any of the other trade associations that have been represented uh, here over the last few days, uh, and this reinforces the point that Frank made, is that if there is an association in your industry sector and you want to make a difference to the community in which you operate, then join it. Join it today. Because we are all working very hard to make a difference to the communities that we serve. Uh, you saw yesterday when we had the Transformation Council, the discussion, you know, we have all as associations made a commitment to transformation. And yet I look at my board when we have our board meetings and I do not see that many black faces participating in our association. And it's not because we don't want for black organisations to participate. In fact, we have lower membership fees for black owned companies than we do for white owned companies. And yet we still don't have people that participate as actively as we would like. So, yeah, well, I have no idea what slides up. Okay, that one. So, so who is Sakia and what are we all about? And if we can move on to the next slide, I have no idea where the clicker is. I think Kakiso might have taken it. Okay, so we'll just have to do this remotely. Uh, you know, who is Sakia? What are we all about? Our objective is to promote ethical business practices in the industry. Thank you. And. And to, uh, and to pursue technical excellence in everything that we do. So as an association, we have three legs to our body. Uh, Blank, is that the one that, no, that didn't, I think I just, uh, does this work up and down? Next. So within our industry, we have three legs within our association sector, one that covers the broadcast industry, one that covers professional AV, uh, and a third leg that covers live events. And as I said earlier when I was speaking, in November last year, we merged with the TPSA. Uh, and so now the TPSA and SACIA is one organization. Uh, and we've been fairly successful in our activities. We have about 150 corporate members, uh, just whizzing through some of them. Uh, government departments, so uh, Government Communication Service, South African Parliament, Department of Health, uh, Department of Defense are all members of our association. Why? Because they use visual communications technology as a strategic tool in order to, to, uh, to communicate with their constituents. Uh, the broadcast community are very active with us, so SABC, Mnet, ETV, Global Access, Supersport, MultiChoice, all members of the association. A uh, number of universities and trading, uh, training companies, so I think I've got there, who have I got there? Northwest University, TUT, University of Johannesburg, UNISA, University of KwaZulu-Natal, number of other universities. And then we move on to the supply chain. So I, I think all of these organizations have been involved in this event. TADCO, Stage Audio Works, ProSound, DWR, and the list goes on. Uh, and then staging companies. So you know we have a very diverse membership. Some of the organizations that we represent are large, like Parliament or the Defense Force, and others of them are smaller. Uh, you see, I put DB Audio up there because I knew you were in the audience. Um, uh, we also work very hard to collaborate with other industry associations, uh, and we formed a global alliance with the IABM, the International Association of Broadcasting Manufacturers, uh, and also with Infocom International, who are the largest trade association in the world for the audiovisual industry. Uh, they have an Infocom University, and we deliver. Uh, Infocom University courses in South Africa as CPD programs. So uh, I want to stress that we are not a training company. We only uh, deliver short courses as part of a program 
of continuous professional development aimed at professionals working in the marketplace. The important thing about this is that we registered with SACWA as a professional body. Uh, so SACWA is the South African Qualifications Authority. Uh, we've been, uh, our, our membership with them or our, our recognition by them is, is fairly new. Um, and, uh, and we have, and I have no idea if you can read this particular slide, it's a, a printout from their website, but essentially we have uh, three professional designations within the audiovisual industry. And this really relates to, if you remember yesterday when, they were, when the, the fellow from the German uh, association was talking, he spoke about three designations within the entertainment technology sector. Uh, so we have three designations uh, that we award in the professional AV industry. Uh, before I talk about what those designations are, I just actually wanted to share a little bit about the difference between a qualification and a designation. So a qualification is awarded by a university or a, a technicon um, uh, or somebody that's uh, kind of recognised by the Department of Higher Education and Training, whereas a, a professional designation is awarded by a professional body registered with SACWA. And there are a couple of, uh, of differences. Uh, if you go off to university or if you go off to Technicon and you write your exams and you prove yourself academically competent, then you would be awarded a degree. Uh, and that degree is yours. They can't take it away from you. You don't need to participate in a program of continuous professional development in order to maintain it. You don't need to become a member of any association. Uh, you don't need to sign a code of conduct, but you do need to do all of those things with a professional designation. So uh, if you wanted to, to receive a professional designation, you would need to become a member of the association. You need to sign the code of conduct. You need to recognize that you will be held accountable to that particular code. You need to participate in a program of continuous professional development. Uh, and of course, you need to have the work experience. That's the other difference between a designation and a qualification, is that if you have a qualification, you would go off to university, you prove yourself academically competent um, with a professional designation. That needs to be backed up with work experience. So we have three professional designations within the audiovisual industry. Uh, the SACIA Certified AV Associate, which is our entry level designation. Uh, the SACIA Certified AV Practitioner is the intermediate level, and the SACIA Certified AV Professional, which is the highest level. Each of them requires an underlying qualification. So in order to earn the AV Associate designation, you need to have an NQF Level 4 qualification, similar to that that, that uh, is run through SARA, and you need to have at least one year's uh, practical work experience in the industry, uh, you then sign the professional co code of professional conduct, you become a member of the association, and you were awarded a professional designation that is registered with SACWA and listed on the National Qualifications Framework. Uh, and similar kind of situations, if you wanted to become the AV practitioner, uh, you need to have a relevant NQF Level 5 designation. Um, it could be any relevant designation. I, I, you know, Freddie... Uh, and Joseph and I are currently working with Cat CETA, not very successfully, but trying to, uh, to get a Cat 5, uh, 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 an NQF Level 5 designation off the ground. Um, uh, but you can qualify for that designation without the NQF Level 5 if you have six years of practical work experience working in the industry, and then a similar sort of situation for the AV professional. Uh, designation. So for that one, you would require an underlying NQF Level 6 designation uh, plus five years work experience, or without the underlying qualification, 10 years practical work experience working in the audiovisual industry. So you know, over the last couple of days, we've spoken about professional designations, and there have been a lot of people that have said, uh, you know, we don't have professional designations in the industry. Uh, uh, you know, this is fairly new for us. We were only registered in February. Uh, but it's a process that we've been working on for two years. We're very excited about what this means in terms of uh, uh, the recognition of skills, particularly because it has inherent within it a recognition of prior learning and work experience. Uh, so, uh, you know, I'm really not going to go on 
too much more than that, other than to repeat what I said and to repeat what Frank said earlier. Uh, and that is that you know, if there is an association in your sector, whether it's uh, IFIA, I would, uh, what, what, whatever Janet's association is called, whether it's EXA, you know, whatever association it is that exists in, the, in your industry sector, participate because the more people that join, the more difference we can make. Uh, you know, we really do need traction and support and feet on the ground are the only way that we can achieve it.